Well, I know it's no surprise to you, certainly no surprise to me, that the anti-communist manifesto has been a gigantic smash success. I can't believe that. I, actually, it is a surprise to me. I can't believe that. But there is one seriously bad part about it, and that bad part is you. Because you found out that I hate the word literally, and now if you go look at the reviews online, everyone has chosen to use that word reviewing the book. Oh, they're all five-star reviews, don't get me wrong, but everybody dogging me with this freaking poisonous word, I can't take it anymore. And maybe the worst culprit out there is my buddy Kay. She writes for social or for Daily Caller about social decline and apocalypse, and she's not really, really talented, but she does use the word literally, and when you combine that with the fact that she's currently sitting on an exercise ball, she might be the whitest woman on the face of the planet. Kay, go ahead and try to defend this word, because it can't be defended. It's, it's, it's killing me. No, it literally can't be uh, defended, neither can my choice to literally be sitting on an exercise ball, which I do for my back. It's a great life hack. It's cleared all my problems up. I know what it sounds like. I know what I am. But, you know, I literally just, every single day, I just keep going. I, I love the Anti-Communist Manifesto. It's a fantastic piece of, it's a fantastic piece of work, Jesse. It's, it's literally one of the best things that I've ever read. And the fact that you hate the word literally so much just makes it even better, because now I get to enjoy both the work that you've done, but also driving you nuts, which is probably my second favorite thing to do in the whole world other than use the word literally. <laughs> I, can't, I can't take it anymore, okay? Between that, the exercise ball, I'm sure the essential oils are probably just off camera, just to, just to complete the white woman picture. Anyway. You do write about the apocalypse. I talk about climate communism in chapter six. This, these are my brilliant words, Kay. There's nothing that the true believers won't attribute to climate change. Every single observable phenomenon in nature is now considered that the prophecy is coming to pass. With all climate-related events now blamed on climate change, the environmental religion has found the perfect basis for control. And since everything human beings do expels CO2, they can control everything. Gosh, that is so witty and brilliant, don't you think, Hey? No, it's literally fantastic. Uh, brilliant, brilliant mm. words, all in order. It's superb. But, you know, to get back to the more sort of like serious point here, you're absolutely spot on, Jesse. I mean, what we've, what we've seen in Europe, what I experienced growing up is a true indoctrination of ignorance in our relationship with the natural world. So for any of your viewers who don't know, I part of my degree was in climate change and the study of climate change. And there's a lot that gets left out from kind of the mainstream headlines and the mainstream rhetoric on this subject matter. For example, there's an entire like subfield of study within climate change called uncertainty because there are so many unknown factors. And while we can look at historical climate and sort of see point blank that we're actually living in a pretty calm time climatologically like the only real issues that we have with the climate come from our own greed and that doesn't actually impact sort of like the climate is in the air around us i'm talking about sort of like things with polluting waterways the fact that we've got very corrupt organizations who manage most of our natural resources things like that um, and then you can kind of flip to the other side of it, right? We've got this natural relationship with the world, but now we've also got this sort of like mass psychological manipulation that has given so many global governments. I mean, America is really one of the last holdouts, if you can believe it. Um, but pretty much all these different global governments are now taking away freedoms from people like you and I, uh, all under the guise of this thing, climate change, that we don't actually fully understand at all. And actually, the fact that we don't understand it doesn't mean that we can't deal with what the planet is throwing at us. We just choose to not we just choose to adapt in the wrong ways. It's so stupid to me. Literally. It is in K in K K. And you know what? This actually brings up a point that I've thought of a lot. That, that something that bothers me is these people, these anti-human communist pieces of trash, they will <laughs> cut us off 
from actually addressing things we want to address, like you just mentioned, pollution and things like that. I grew up hunting and fishing and hiking and things, and if I see a beer can on the ground out in nature, it just makes my head want to freaking explode. I freaking hate that. I hate the massacring of the environment, which I love, but I can't really talk about that very much because these people have hijacked the whole thing and they think the air I'm breathing out and cow farts are making the world warmer. So they've cut us off from talking about things I would love to be passionate about. Some corporation massacring a mountain, dumping a bunch of stuff in a river, and putting toxins in the ground that cause cancer. These are real things I would love to dig into, but since these climate nutters have hijacked the whole thing with their, with their cult, that you can't even address it. Well, that's something that I'm really trying to tackle within my career. And you know this very well. When I came out to the States, I was a very liberal socialist. Uh, progressive and wokeism hadn't really become a thing yet. And as that sort of swept in, I was living out in California. And aside from the humanitarian crisis that is California, when I look at the way that the land is managed there under sort of so-called Democrats, if you will, I just think they're all part of the global elite at this point, and that's all scum. Um, but when you look at the way they actually manage the resources they have, none of it makes sense. So like, for example, over the last six months, we've had some of the highest levels of precipitation in California in the last hundred years, we think. We, there's no way to really know exactly what it was, but that's a whole other subtopic. Um, I want to make sure that that water resource is managed effectively, that we avoid flash flooding as soon as we start seeing this massive melt. We've already had two lakes that disappeared off the face of the earth because of terrible management of California's water supply. Uh, they've just come back. I want to make sure that that kind of stuff is managed appropriately. And I want to point fingers at the people that aren't doing it. And when I hear politicians teaching essentially young kids that, yeah, cow farts are the worst thing in the world and we all need to be eating bugs, that's the first place where I turn around and say, well, how about then we teach kids how to actually have that relationship with the planet to uh, take nothing but photographs, leave nothing but footprints. That's the way that I was raised in your, like how you're supposed to interact with the natural world. If we really want to help the planet, we have to do it by teaching as many people as possible how to do that on an individual level. It does not come from the sweeping reform. If these climate nutters really wanted to fix something, guess what? We'd have no new stuff. No new stuff would come about. We would recycle everything that we have. We'd have no electric vehicles because they contribute more to climate change and to the slave trade than any other field, basically, of industry. I mean, I could go on. There are so many practical solutions that we're not teaching people about that are so attainable, but it means removing power from these people who 90% of Americans, 99% of Americans are dependent upon. Something happened tomorrow, Jesse, you and I would know how to live at one with nature. We know how to go out, we know how to grow things, we know how to kill things, we know how to provide for our family. Most people don't know how to do that. And that's what keeps making these globalists even more wealthy. And that's why they're gonna keep pushing that sort of like, we're all in this together to fight climate change. Literally couldn't fight it if we wanted to, but okay, anyway, stop me, otherwise I'm gonna keep going on because this is my bread and butter, literally. Okay, Smythe, you are the worst person, but I love you, come back soon. <laughs> I love you too, I'll be back soon. <laughs> The Anti-Communist Manifesto, a new must-read book from Jesse Kelly. Get your copy today at jessekellybook.com or wherever books are sold.